iPhone 6 Plus Touch IC Disease. Uh, this is going to be in uh, minus the bar low lens. So this is going to be a little weird because my tip is going to be a lot closer to the chip now. Probably shouldn't. Who knows what this is going to affect. Well, I'll tell you what, it was a lot easier to move that chip. I'm going to turn my heat down a little bit. This thing is not even uh, aligned properly either. There you go, it looks a little more straight. So I'm using the my micro pencil here. It's the C105-112 uh, cartridge. They call and for JBC they call them cartridges, not tips. Right. So this video is probably gonna be a lot better, isn't it? I mean, I think I could definitely see a little better. Definitely see, but the working distance is just not there. Like I feel like I'm I have to bend my pencil a little bit, even though I have a good amount of working distance. Hopefully the point seven five will will be the right. You know, I can definitely see a lot better. Like I'm I'm so close to the board right now. Like it's nice. So uh, let's just follow the same procedure. This video's got to be better too. You want to make sure you get some shiny copper because if you don't get shiny copper, it's going to be very hard to tin it. So I just filed down my uh, Aram tweezers, Aram $12 tweezers or something like that, whatever, $13 tweezers from Amazon. Alright, okay, that's what I got. And then I think I'm going to try something different this time. I'm going to use my 0.1 millimeter tip here to try to tin it with some uh, lead, -free, lead free solder. So I got lead free solder. And then I'm just going to see if I can tin it this way. I think that's easier actually. So I'll probably just use that from now on. I was I didn't I think I got a little lazy and I didn't uh wanna switch my tips, but it's actually pretty easy to switch tips on the on the JBC. I'm out of trace nope, not a trace wire right here. Right here. I might even be able to just do it on this side. So I'm really lazy. One of my Hako tweezers, it doesn't, like, it's not straight anymore, so it doesn't pick up stuff.
All right, this is a lot easier. So this is what I'm gonna be doing from now on here. A lot easier than the knife tip. So that is that. Uh, let's, let's let's get rid of that little blub. Whatever the crap right there. Okay, that's gone. All right, so let's clean this up. Get a new, get a reballed mason out. We're good. Um, uh, flux. All right, let's see if I can do this without burning stuff since I'm so much closer now. Shouldn't take too long these days, right? I'm not going to lie, but this is definitely a little bit easier here. Looks like it's standing up pretty high, doesn't it? I don't know if it's just because I'm so close to the damn thing. Anyways. I'm about to turn my airflow down too, because I'm so much closer now. Hopefully I don't run into any secondary problems here. I just well I think it just looks weird because I'm so close to it I think it's normal though All right so I always uh do a continuity check on the m1 just make sure it didn't ground so that should be and yeah, that should not be. Okay, so we're good. Just gonna let it cool down just a little bit and I'll put some IPA on it and wash away some of the flux. <laughs> Look at that fuzz, oh man. Okay, that's good. So Test it now. Make sure everything works. Well, all right. So this is good right here. So we're good. <laughs> 